things, I sat still and I asked myself, like, if people do sign up, do I actually have the energy to move forward? The honest answer was no, because I still had to build so many of the other elements and pieces of the program. There wasn't enough energy. And that realization was pretty scary because I had poured so much into it. The expectation was for January. That was what I felt like I was prepping for the entire year. I didn't want to disappoint the people that were interested, that were like very close to signing up. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi, hello, welcome to the last episode of season two. And I've been meaning to record this episode (laughs) for quite a long time. I think since October, I've had so many topics coming to mind, but there was not enough energy to actually follow through. I talk a lot about honoring our energetics. And I thought perhaps the topic for this episode is about precisely that. And the thing about honoring our energetics is that it's easier said than done. Because how do we know what energies are ours to begin with? How do we know if we're riding on someone's emotional high instead of our own intuitive guidance. And maybe it can be flavored by someone's emotional high, right? But how do we center to what's ours and what are some distractions and noises? And I actually have an anecdote about that that I'll share later in the episode. Because here's the thing about honoring our energies. It doesn't guarantee a certain outcome or that it'll always lead to success. And I know that's, you know, isn't that the whole idea when we learn about human design, astrology and all of that, is that we're able to live with more ease. There is a factor in it, but it's really about living more authentic to you, being able to take care of yourself, making decisions that are more aligned so that the lessons we get are also more aligned instead of spreading ourselves everywhere. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but, you know, overextending ourselves and getting lost in the noise. But anyways, back to how we're always being influenced by the external energies around us. And all that, along with our own energetic definition, influence us and guides us on perhaps what to focus on from moment to moment, where to go, what relationships might be supportive to us, what relationships might be time to wrap up, walk away from. And ever since I learned about human design and my own body graph, I've been able to use this framework to really sensitize to how my energy feels for me and also noticing my own cycles and patterns. Because look, we can't control the energies we're being influenced by, or we can't even control our own energy. Let's say you have a sacral and you have life force energy. That means I have the energy to do all the things I want. But sometimes we might be at a point in our cycle or a collective cycle where we're being asked to slow down. A moment to pause, a moment to wait in between making decisions. And being aware of how we're affected by the energies around us, by our own energies, and what our needs are, can help us actually make better choices for ourselves. So we all go through different cycles, personal cycles and patterns, 
And there's also the same, but on a collective level. And I shared a little bit about this in my Decode Your Energetics workshop that I ran in November. I can't believe it's, it feels like a lifetime ago with everything that's been happening in between. And you can catch the replay on my website. There I broke down the elements from our body graphs, like the different auras, types, definition, centers, how a defined versus undefined might experience them, and a lot more. So right now, it is the end of December, or whenever you're listening to this, I am currently towards the end of December, and you might find yourself in a series of personal cycles that could be either career-oriented, focus on some relationship dynamics, healing, maybe movement related to the body, whatever that could be. And let me show you some examples, personal examples. There's the seven-year cell cycle, the seven-year personal deconditioning. There's also the sixth profile phase where you move from the first 30 years of your life as a third line and then towards the second phase, you're kind of retreating a little bit, healing from all the experiences, trial and error that you've learned in the first phase, integrating them, and eventually towards your late 50s, 60s, that's when you reach your third phase, which is the role model. So that's an example of the phases, profile-wise. There's also Saturn return or Uranus return and you know all those retrogrades and return that is leading us to look into areas that we otherwise might have ignored. And if you're someone who menstruates, there's also the phases of our menstrual cycle. Do you see all the cycles we're surrounded by? And an example of collective cycles are the seasons in nature. Right now I'm in Canada, so we're going towards the death of winter. Things have have been and are still slowing down, going into a pause. There's also the astrological movements that we're always being influenced as, also known as the transits in human design, where we all had the 3536, the channel of transitoriness energy defined. We all had emotional centers defined for the past, I think, few months or weeks. What is time? And there's also the moon phases, eclipses. I think we're still in Mars retrograde and then going in the shadow of Mercury retrograde, which again, a lot of things coming up for us to focus. What is working? What is not working? And on a bigger community level, there's disruptions of old societal systems around us. There is a lot of political disruption everywhere. Something is happening. And in human design terms, technically, we're moving from the cross of planning for the past 400 years towards the cross of the phoenix in 2027. And we're in the shadow one, in the shadow energy where everything is being burnt down. Everything's that's not working to be reborn again into this new way of being and it's gradual and you might have already noticed that disruption people quitting their jobs people switching careers or making drastic changes influence flavor by this energy that is asking us to look deep inwards confront us with hard truths even and no matter where we're at we're all influenced by these collective events And even in our personal cycles, it's not something we get to necessarily control or plan out because they'll last as long as they last. And we're simply in them. And the awareness can help inform us on what lessons are being brought up to the surface, what is here to be learned, to release, or what we need to do to take care of ourselves during these times. Sometimes we're just riding that wave and there's nothing to do other than holding that energy learning how to nourish ourselves until we get some space and clarity later on and it's also such a wonderful example that we're not here to be always on all the time there are periods of rest intertwined with sporadic creation and incubation period and then maybe a time to share to be out there 
but everybody's patterns and cycles look different. And the more we're able to honor these cycles, the easier it is to surrender to that phase and take care of ourselves so we can adapt, mutate, restore before being called to the next phase. So I also talked about some examples by human design types in my Decode Your Energetic workshop, and I'm going to share them again here. For instance, the manifestor cycle. Manifestors are here to initiate, to make an impact. Their strategy is to inform before they make a decision. And that being said, it doesn't mean they're here to initiate all the time or they get to initiate whenever they want. Remember, strategy and authority is to signal all your energies aligning. Because manifestors cycle between initiating and resting. It's not necessarily a linear cycle. And initiating takes up a lot of energy without a sacro to sustain it. When you feel like you're winding down, it's important you allow yourself to slow down and maybe hand it off to someone else or put a pause on it and come back to it later. And resting does not mean doing nothing. It's the period where you wind up before the next thing, a space to get inspired, to get ideas on your next steps. And this incubation period can last anywhere between days, hours, weeks, or months. So creating a work rest cycle that supports your regeneration and restoration is crucial. Give yourself space to do your own thing, to soften into yourself. And I say that a lot because sometimes I'm like holding on to the things I have to do that I don't feel as present. I don't really drop into my body, into my present, my reality. And also consider your profile and definition as well. How can you lean into your profile to support your process as a manifester? Do you have a one? Is researching, getting lost in wonder something that you love doing? Do you have a two? Do you have times where you just want to be in your own, doing your own thing? And then get called out by it. People who recognize that energy. Do you have a three? wanting to explore, to test things out, to break things just to see if they work or not. Allow yourself to do that for the sake of a four. Who are your friends? Who are the people that can help you nourish yourself? Who are the people that you can share your revelations, your wisdom with? Five, what solutions are you coming up with? How can you play with them? See who invites you to share those solutions, and let yourself have fun. And finally, six, no matter what phase you're at, how can you allow yourself to be? To observe, to sit back a little bit, and engage when you feel ready. You know, all these profiles apply for all the types. Now, the next one, for generators and MGs. They're here to generate, sustain life. Their strategy is to respond to what their aura pulls in. Their life force energy is meant to be channeled and sustained through doing what they find joy, excitement, pleasure, satisfaction in. Even though I'm sharing about both generators and MGs here, know that their pacing and focus might differ from each other. Generally, manifesting generators are known to move fast, They might jump from one thing to another, while a generator might be more thorough and takes their time through each thing they commit to. What I'm sharing about today here is the sacral cycle. So the sacral energy is a regenerative life force energy, but that does not mean they don't get tired or don't need rest. Sometimes sacral beings hit a plateau in their energy. It's like their sacral winding down after completing a task they've committed to is not super responsive, but this is like a signal to maybe step back, reconnect, rest, and in waiting for the next thing, frustration might come up during this time. Simply check in and see what other areas meet your attention. It's part of your process and nothing's wrong with you. And frustration might come up in many ways to signal many things. Remember, our not self themes aren't here to say you this is right or wrong. It's more like, hey, pay some extra attention. Does that mean I should continue? Does that mean I should take a step back? 
just observe. It's not here for us to judge ourselves when we notice it coming up, but it's an invitation to look into ourselves with curiosity. Sacros can also get burnout when they ignore their body's cues. The other parts of their designs where are their openness, their definition, what cycle they're at. And there's also a daily sacral cycle that resets every day. And ideally, it should be used up by doing what you enjoy, moving your body so you go to bed exhausted. It's almost like the sacral wants to pour and channel that life force energy into something, something that is satisfying. So if during your day you don't get to do that, is there something, a practice, a routine that you can sneak into at the end of the day where you can pour that energy out? Could it be moving your body? Could it be baking something? Could it be, I don't know, eating your favorite food (laughs) for like 10, 15 minutes? You know, letting a container, a place where you can pour that life force energy, where you get to create for the sake of, can be so nourishing. Now we're on to the projector cycle. Projectors are here to guide, and their strategy is to wait for the invitation to do so. With your penetrating aura, you take in the other and can hold on to their energies if you're not mindful. Without the defined sacral, your energy comes in bursts, and that burst may last a few hours, a few weeks, and then a resting period after that. Remember, you're not built to be consistently letting that sacral energy flow through you. So time away from other sacrals or time to be in your own is very, very important whenever you have a chance. And it also gives you more clarity, more space to discern what invitations are aligned or not. Also when to guide and when to rest because just because you're invited, you're recognized, doesn't mean it's right for you though. And notice if you're operating on an excess amplifying sacral or emotional authority, notice that and check in. Is your body actually exhausted when you pause and slow down? That's usually when we notice, oh, you know, whenever we have a second to pause and tune in, that's when we give our minds and bodies a chance to recalibrate. Are they on the same page right now? So how can you nourish yourself during those times? Can you go for a walk, take a nap, some gentle stretches? How do you take care of yourself before the next invitation, before the next opportunity to guide? And are you spending in time, are you spending time in places where you're recognized? How does recognition feel in your body? And there's also a difference between the right energetic recognition versus mental recognition, such as somebody projecting on you or somebody seeing that you're great at that, but for you, does it feel like something you want to do? Does it feel aligned to where you're going? And again, consider your profile, definition, all the other elements of your charts. And now for reflectors. Reflectors are a reflection of the health of their environment. Their strategy is to wait a lunar cycle, which gives them the time to move through different definitions and gather insights. And even though, as a reflector, you're meant to be fluid in your 28-day cycle, doesn't mean you don't have some grounding practices that you can lean on. What are some rituals that can support you? How does your toolkit look like? And you might feel the tension of wanting to be around people at times because you're designed to move through a lot of different energies and also needing alone time. Again, look into your profile. (laughs) How does your energy interact with others? What is the dance that that it does? And how can you give yourself this time and space to simply be, to be in your own aura? And how can you move around different energies and also see which one feels the most nourishing at that time? And not every decision needs a 28-day cycle. You may know what's correct for you in your body. 28 days is a suggestion. Be careful of subscribing to the belief that you would be making a huge mistake if you don't wait. You would be making a huge mistake if you haven't given yourself 
28 days to decide what to eat for lunch. (laughs) You know what I mean? Slow down, be with your energies. You are intuitive, you're open. You have so much knowledge in your physical body that you can tap into at any time. The 28 days is just to give you more data. And you're not here to move fast like the rest of the world. Give yourself space to stand back and observe. So again, remember, this is just a tiny component of our designs. Knowing an example of a reflector cycle, plus your definition, plus the gates that you have, plus what are in the transits, you know, all these give us additional data on how to support ourselves and maybe release a little bit more of the judgment. I used to have this nagging feeling that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Everything looked great on the outside, but somewhere along the way, I realized that this is not for me. I felt disconnected from myself, success felt elusive. I was feeling frustrated, angry, and even disappointed at how my days looked like. There was also another voice that said, you've invested all these years to this path. You gave it all and it's going, quote, according to plan, unquote. (laughs) So why the heck was I feeling this way? Now, if you've been resonating or this feels very familiar to you, it might be because just like me, you've been following everyone else's path but your own. And that's how we were conditioned. We were told that there are certain success paths and feelings that we're supposed to feel once we get there. But when the external expectations don't line up with our internal world, that's when we experience and notice a little bit of tension. Are you ready to tune into your inner guidance to learn and honor your energetics, to recognize your blocks and limit, to lead into your strengths, to stop second guessing yourself and instead cultivate trust to be able to self-regulate through your cycles and patterns, to tune into your body wisdom. And if any of this stirred something in you in any way, I'd love to invite you to my three-month experience called Coming Home. It's an intimate container where we deep dive into our human design body graph, sensitize to the expression of our energies, and come home to ourselves. Find more at www.wholeandunleashed.com. about how knowing these cycles can support us better because at the end of the day we can't control our energies you know the concept of no choice which can feel a bit helpless to hear are things the way they're supposed to be am I making my own choices or there is a predetermined fate that we're living in whatever it is I wanted to lightly touch on this because I think this idea, this notion comes from the fact that energy cannot be controlled. So understanding our mechanics doesn't mean we get to control the outcome, the timing, the circumstances of our experiences. We have no control over the transits, the people we get into connection with, but we can be aware of how we're being affected and react to said energies. We can be aware of the cycles, lessons, and patterns that support us or might be keeping us stuck. While following our strategy and authority doesn't guarantee success, it's about honoring ourselves, following that inner guidance as opposed to abandoning ourselves. Because deconditioning, healing, embodiment starts with awareness. It's not about finding all the answers, but learning to hold the questions, the tensions, the discomfort we've uncovered. Recognizing where we're at, creating a safe space to soften into, to heal and nourish ourselves. Now, here's a personal story about following the guidance of my energies and trying to honor myself. Because I used to feel so much pressure to show up every week in my newsletter or on my socials, even when the words weren't coming. And it was a mix between my desire to serve to be consistent and at the same time, making sure I was providing value. That is until I started noticing my energetic pulls and eventually learn about the expression of my throat gates in my human design. It was a good intention that I had set up to show up to serve, but it wasn't aligned to my energetics. So much of what we do 
how we share is unique to us. Our voice, our words carry a unique frequency. When I learn about my expression gates in human design, specifically the ones located in my undefined throat center, so many things finally clicked. The throat center is the hub for voice, expression, communication, and action. And each gate in the throat has a theme and a voice. With an undefined throat, I amplify others' throat energy. And when I do, this energy usually goes through my hanging gates. It's not consistent. I don't have control over how, when it's going to be expressed. And let's be honest, applies to all gates and channels, no matter what energy type you are. And in my case, I have the hanging 12 and 33. Both of these gates are known as the gates of aloneness, which means time alone is needed to process and alchemize this energy. They're also on my unconscious side. So not something I'm super aware of. So much of my expression is around my emotional reflections. And when I'm in the mood, the words just flow out. So really giving myself the space and time to retreat helps me process and integrate everything I'm taking in until I'm ready and invited to share. So the lesson here, the example that I'm sharing with you today is that Forcing myself to show up to write when there was no energy available doesn't just strain me, it also reduces the impact of what I share. And the more I'm able to honor that energetic need of resting, of when to externalize, the more things are able to fall into place. I'm able to get out of my own way and embody my gifts. Now, I spent a good part of the summer between retreat and creation, testing and strengthening my human design foundations. Around April, I had a massive download for a group program and it lasted for a week where just inspiration was dropping by and it was struck me at the most random times I would pull up my note app and write everything down. But interesting enough, there wasn't an energy that was guiding me to launch. It just didn't feel it was ready to be shared in the world yet. And at that time, it was spring. So many people were launching programs. So I definitely felt a bit of FOMO. But I also had this guidance, this voice that was saying not yet. So I just let it sit in the back of my mind. And a few months later, I would get more pieces downloaded to me. Later on in the summer, towards the very, very end, as I was biking, it hit me, this energetic, expansive energy was the final piece, the final puzzle of the program. Everything was just flowing into my awareness. And I got to my destination where I was biking to, which was a spot right in front of the water. And I was eager to write everything down. And right as I arrived, there was this cute little red fox that walked towards me. And there's not a lot of red foxes or foxes in the city, but, you know, I encounter one. I froze (laughs) as much as I wanted to pet it. It's a wild animal, and I figured I should just do nothing until it left. I was in awe. It's not every day that you cross paths with a red fox. I'm not sure what that means. I think I googled about it, but now I do not remember. But anyways, I saw that as a sign. I sat down, pulled out my journal, and wrote everything that came through during that bike ride. That was it. That was the final piece. And then I could feel my energy like building up. And there was another nudge, another surge that, okay, time to prepare Time to clear out what's keeping you busy right now. Time to make space for this program to go through you. And mind you, this is the longest I've ever sat with something. Because usually when I get an idea, I would want to go into it. It comes with a burst of energy to create, to share it out with the world. But this one, this big program wasn't ready. So I prepped during the fall, focused on clearing, finishing commitments, making space to prep for this launch so that I can really let this flow through me. And honestly, learning that I was a projector and that there's only so much I can do wasn't 
discouraging. It was so validating because I had been trying to do all the things to keep up with all the business advice out there about how to show up, how to keep your audience engaged. But all of those things, I didn't take myself into consideration. What do I need? What feels right for me? So after a few months later, I ran my workshop, Decode Your Energetics, and so much fun preparing for it. A lot of people signed up and Integrate Group showed up. It was perfect. I love everybody's insights and reflections. And that was exactly the vibe, energy, and the space that I wanted to create with my group program. It was such a safe space to share and process. So naturally, I started sharing more posts leading up to the launch for January. Strategy and authority, everything was aligned. Yet, the energy between November when I launched a workshop and now December has been so much. And we're moving through a lot, a lot on a collective level, but also for me, perhaps it is my season to really slow down and reflect It was just so intense. It's almost like there was this stuckness. And I'll check, okay, what are the transits? What's happening? And noticing that I was going through an emotional definition helped (laughs) for when I panicked. (laughs) And I was getting a lot of traction yet. A lot of people told me, hey, I want to, but not yet. From all of that, I got a few new clients, coachings and readings So I started tuning into myself and there was a particular week. And for me personally, along with the 35, 36 definition and the Mars retrograde, and it might have been like a full moon or new moon, one of those like energetic things. I definitely went through the crisis of the 36. Like, what am I going to do? I don't have enough people for the program. Should I launch now? Should I not launch? And then really going through the crisis and the disappointment and just holding myself through these energies, I sat still. And I asked myself, like, if people do sign up, do I actually have the energy to move forward? The honest answer was no, because I still had to build so many of the other elements and pieces of the program. There wasn't enough energy. And that realization was pretty scary because I had poured so much into it. The expectation was for January. That was what I felt like I was prepping for the entire year. I didn't want to disappoint the people that were interested, that were like very close to signing up, but also knew that I needed to honor myself. It felt scary. And I also felt during the beginning of December, I kept getting pulled into doing, wanting to do a giveaway. I'm like, what the hell is happening? I want to finish launching. I want to finish sharing about the program, but my energy just wanted to do a giveaway. So along with the energy of crisis and riding through the emotional high, I think I was in that for a week. And then suddenly a week later, I felt this clarity, this softening of, okay, it's okay to pause this, share with the people (laughs) and do your giveaway. The moment I allowed myself to do that, I felt so much more lighter. And I shared it with people in my newsletter, with my social media. And the response from that was actually not what I expected. I got a few responses of people telling me, actually, I've been wanting to sign up, but this is not a good time for me. It's so busy. I have no energy. But thank you for honoring yours. And I felt like, oh my gosh, is that (laughs) what it means to honor ourselves? Like this is the time to walk the talk. And I can't believe by honoring myself to people that wanted to be part of it also were able to soften and not feel like they were missing out. And all this that I'm sharing in maybe not a super coherent way, full circle of following our strategy and authority might not lead to what we expected, but it does take us to where we're supposed to go. Maybe that's my six line talking right here, but 
I follow my strategy and authority when I launched. I had this energy that was ready. And I also follow my strategy and authority when it was time to pause, to reevaluate, to make the next decision. It was exactly what I needed to do because the launch in itself was so energizing, so much fun. It was so healing. It also got a lot of new people that were interested in working with me. Maybe not in the capacity of a group program, but in one-on-ones. And I'm so grateful for that. I don't think I would have shared that much if I didn't have a launch or something to channel that energy into. So this is something that I've been sharing with a lot of my clients. Strategy and authority, following your inner guidance does not mean that you will instantly be in a happy place. Of course, there will be slightly more ease, you will feel more, more in tune, but sometimes as life often is, <laughs> there will be challenges, there will be resistance. But following our energies is the road with the least amount of resistance. Does not mean there are no issues or things won't hit the fan. It just means that we're honoring ourselves throughout no matter what happens. And we also have the tools to ground, to be present, to make decisions where we're honoring us. As hard as it was, it was hard. But I'm so proud of being able to do that and being able to model this as well. I know it sounds like I'm patting myself in the shoulder a lot, (laughs) but I'm just grateful for everyone who responded when I shared this news And we're supportive of that. Sometimes we give ourselves beautiful goals, but not a lot of flexibility to pivot because no one could have anticipated this dip in energy. It's not about knowing what's going to happen in the future or it's not about guaranteeing that all the good things will happen. I think for me, it's about really tuning in. How am I doing right now? What do I need? Because we we can do our best to prepare for the future, but we have no idea what's going to come. In the past, we're here to reflect on it. All we really have is the present. And when we take care of ourselves in the present, we're able to show up in the future in a way that's more aligned. It was a bit of a ramble here. (laughs) You can probably tell why this took a few months to come together but as we're coming towards the end of 2022 I'd love to invite you to pause to slow down and really look into where you're at what you're holding and what are some things you can release what are some things that are feeling a bit heavy to hold is it something that you can release on your own Can you lean on somebody, friend, family member, therapist? And what are some things you want to make space for? How can you honor yourself and also take care of yourself when unexpected things happen? How can you stay grounded and come back to your center? It's okay when we step out of a center here and there. It's part of life. (laughs) That's where we learn our lessons. And then come back. I hope this was supportive. I hope you're having a wonderful, reflective end of the year. And happy 2023. I'm so excited to hibernate a little bit. (laughs) Honor my energetic slowing down. And then come back with season three. Maybe a bonus episode here and there might pop up. But... We'll see. (laughs) Thank you for being here with me. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in 
and have a wonderful day wherever you are.